That's so powerful, and I fully agree. But has it ever not worked out how you pictured it? And yes. then, and then, what kind of what goes through your mind after that? Oh, my thoughts lied to me, or is it just like, ah, eh, whatever? Okay, well, the next one will be right. It's and whatever. It's okay. Okay, that's great. Because listen, things aren't going to be perfect all the time. There's yeah. a million variables you can't control. Yeah. My goal is control the controllables. Mm-hmm. I'm going to control what I can. I don't know if something crazy happens, if it starts pouring rain and my leg breaks down. I don't visualize my leg breaking down. There's things that just happen. But if you convince yourself of something so fully, I truly believe that it is more likely to happen than if you do absolutely nothing about it. And so if I convince myself that I'm going to win a world title, I'm going to become Paralympic champion, I'm going to go down as the greatest Paralympian of all time, if I convince myself of these things, I believe I am increasing the likelihood substantially that they will come true. 100%, so, dude. And so one of my um, one of the thing, one of my most recent quotes that I've heard that I absolutely love is mm. the easiest way to predict the future is to create it. And I think humans humans love thinking about the future, whether it's what type of car we're going to have in 30 years or where am I going to be, like how many kids am I going to have? 100%. Humans love this idea of the future, but it doesn't exist. It, it never has. It never will. It's just time. And so I really think like people set up the path for themselves in their mind by just by trying to imagine, like this idea of the future for them is just putting them in a box that is essentially capped, right? But if you can tell yourself like, this is what's gonna happen, then you will go and create it. Whatever it is, whether it is in sports, whether it's winning a competition, whether it's um, just happiness. 100%. Like if, if you go about your daily life thinking like, oh, I'm I'm not gonna figure it out. Once again, this this attitude of like, everything doesn't work out in my favor, then it won't. But exactly. if you wake up every day and you believe like today is going to be a great day, tomorrow is going to be even better, I'm going to do all the things I said I was going to do, and life is awesome, right? If you just tell yourself that, it, dude, it just happens. And like, I love that you said the thing about being lucky earlier because I used to consider myself not a lucky person. Mm. And not that many things were really going well for me. And I mean, you heard me before we walked into this podcast. I literally said to you, I said to you out loud, I was like, damn, bro, I've been hella lucky recently, like shit just worked out. Like for everyone listening to this podcast, like um, I fucked up and I scheduled it uh, for 11 o'clock in the morning. And then I forgot to change the time on my calendar. And Ezra calls me and he's like, yo, I'm here two hours early. And I'm like, dude, you're early, bro. And he's like, no, I'm not. And like, this is such a great podcast and I'm so glad it worked out, but there very well could have been a chance that like it would just booked at one o'clock, yeah. which is when I, when I thought it was for. Or if I but had just scheduled my training at one yeah. today or something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just feel like I've been getting really lucky recently and I think it's all, hopefully I'm right about this, stemmed from like a positive attitude. I think that's like step one. I guess a question I want to ask you is for anybody who's feeling like lost or maybe they just don't know where to start, because I think... I think a lot of people who may listen in or watch these types of podcasts might not necessarily know the answer. They might they might be feeling lost a little bit, but they want to get better, and so they're watching like for hopefully some sort of motivation or yeah. or like that slap in the face, whatever. What's your advice on how to get on the right track if you're, you know, if you don't know what to do? That's the hard thing, right? You and I are very lucky. We're very young. We found something that gives us purpose and meaning and gives us a direction at a very early stage in our lives. A lot of people don't ever find that. So they just follow what they're told. They they get a job that they dislike. They go to school for something that they don't even enjoy and end up working for the rest of their lives with no real purpose and meaning behind anything that they do. So the first step is finding your lane, finding your purpose. What is your what is your 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 meaning and and what is your why? And I think what it comes down to is if you haven't found it yet, it's putting yourself out there. It's trying. I had a friend of mine who told me he didn't know what he wanted to do. He didn't. He wanted to be an athlete, he thought, but he didn't really know. He didn't have a sport that he really enjoyed. He didn't know where his life was going to take him, but he wanted to do something athletic. And 
I said, all right, let's sign you up for a CrossFit class. Let's sign you up for this. Let's try this. Let's do it. And so we started trying a bunch of things. He ended up finding what he liked. I think he's DJing now because we just started trying things. I just put him out there and he was figuring out where he wanted to go. And then who knows, he might, what if he goes and starts making content about how to DJ properly, becomes, creates his own channel and then ends up, you know, working for some big DJ as an assistant. We don't know where life could take him. But the first step, in my opinion, is trying things, stepping out of your comfort zone, exploring the possibilities of where this life could take you, where could you find your meaning, where could you find your purpose, where could you find your passion. And once you found that, I think it is unbelievably important to outline extremely unrealistic and impossible goals. I think that's necessary. I think most people fail. This is a saying that I love. Most people fail not because they set goals that are too high and don't accomplish them, but rather because they set goals that are too low and then they accomplish those. And in turn, are leaving crazy potential on the table because they didn't believe that they were capable of more. So once you figured out your purpose, once you figured out this direction, you must set crazy, impossible, audacious, statistically unlikely goals, and then pursue that with the utmost tenacity, the utmost perseverance, and sacrifice in order to accomplish them. And I truly believe those three steps, you can pretty much accomplish anything you set Dude. your mind to. Perfectly said. I love that. I fully agree. I think it's that common. It's that common phrase. Like, shoot, what is it? Shoot for the stars, you'll hit the moon. Or is it yeah, yeah, right exactly, exactly, exactly. Right? So, exactly. Yeah, and Elon Musk does that a lot, which I love. Like, Elon Musk will always say, "I'm gonna have this done on this date." He never hits it. Like, never. Right? I'm gonna have self-driving cars by 2019. Was his original statement. They they were yeah. barely in production. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says like our stock value. But is how much? Be worth how much faster did, did he get He's it done? He's moving faster yeah. than everybody else because and because he's setting unrealistic goals. 100. percent It's weird, dude. I I do. I'm trying to do the same with my company in terms of like sales goals. Like, I'm you know I'll tell myself like I'm gonna hit uh, 300,000 a month in my first year mm -hmm. in revenue. Mm -hmm. Um, we got half that in a yeah. year. Right. But th that's still like, imagine if yeah. I was shooting for like 50 K that's, so I got, I didn't even, I got halfway to my goal, but that's still crazy. in one year as like a fucking startup clothing brand with no like budget, and like how bootstrap, much, like you went so much further than you ever would have yeah. thought is possible. If you set a goal of 75 or even a hundred yeah. or even 120, you might've not even hit yeah. that. And the other thing is, you might set next year another unrealistic goal, or an unrealistic. I don't even like that characterization of it. I'm just saying that so the people understand. But a really, really high goal. It's yeah. just it's just a crazy goal, a crazy dream. You might set another one, and then one year you might fucking blow it out of the water. You yeah. don't know. That's the beauty of it. And I think that human potential is driven by these crazy dreams. One hundred percent. And I think the problem is though that a lot of people hate the idea of being wrong. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves to be right. So that's why they will pick an easy goal, right? They, they'll pick something that's realistic so that they can be right. Whereas the other guy might pick something way unrealistic, that word, once again, unrealistic, and they're wrong, but they still got twice as far as the guy with the realistic one exactly. who was right. You know, so people I, are afraid of failure. Yeah. You have to be okay with failure. You have to be okay with being wrong. I made a TikTok about that yesterday and some people got mad about it for whatever reason. I don't understand. That's like step one is you have to be okay with failure because just like Michael Jordan or Tom Brady, like they might have the most wins, but they've had more failures than everybody else too because they've been around for longer, right? Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, you just have to be okay with failing. That's but, the thing because listen, people would be okay to fail if they failed in private. Most of the time, it's other people's expectations that influence your perception of failure. Mm -hmm. I had people on the US team call me in the lead up to world championships, friends of mine, and say, listen, man, I don't think you should be going around saying you're gonna be the world champ and saying you're gonna do all this stuff. I love what that you do that. What happens, what happens if you don't do it, man? What it, and I said, I would never not vocalize my goals out of fear of not accomplishing them. Dude, that's perfect. And um, I started doing that myself after I heard McGregor say it a few years ago. So many people say, keep your goals and ambitions private, right? Don't don't tell people about it because they're going to shit talk you, whatever. Good. That's better. Like, I feel like if you say something that just sounds absolutely ridiculous out loud, people will guaranteed say, all right, buddy, like, relax. But if you end up going through with it and you do accomplish that goal or whatever it is you said you were going to do, number one, that feeling is going to be amazing, right? And you felt that, I felt that. It's going to feel so good to say you're going to do something and actually follow through with it to prove people wrong. 
And you get that additional motivation uh, instead of just internal motivation from believing that you can do something yourself, you have the external motivation of everyone else saying you can't do it, right? 100%. So if you don't tell any, they, they say, there's a lot of people say that if you say your goals out loud, that gives you like the dopamine and then you don't even go through with it. I think for a majority of people, yes. But if you are a motivated high achiever, say what you want to do out loud, tell everyone what your plan is. And then you either have to follow through and you have to do it or you look like an idiot. So it's, like, so it's like extra motivation, you know, and you know, I, that's why I say like, I'm going to do this out loud. And I, I tell everyone what my plan is and I might be wrong. I probably will be wrong at some point. But um, I'll get a lot further than if I just kept it to myself. I agree completely. I think I hear people all the time go, listen, we'll see what happens. I really hope I can screw that, screw that mentality. The only way you're going to enact the law of attraction and manifest your dreams, you're going to be creating your reality by vocalizing it by telling the world what you're gonna do, by saying it with the utmost confidence. I am never afraid to vocalize my goals because I know for a damn fact they're gonna happen. And that's it. And if they don't, also, if they don't, who cares? Who cares, bro? At least, listen, no one, you know, after McGregor lost to, to Nate Diaz, People weren't going, oh my God, he said he was going to knock him out in the first round and he didn't. Oh my God. No, there he lost the fight. They were just, oh, McGregor lost. Or if McGregor goes, yeah. I'm going to knock him out in round one. He knocks him out in round two. No one goes, oh, well, Connor, you said That's round true. one. That's true. I never thought about no that. No one's, you, you, what, you said round one? No one cares. Yeah. The dude did it anyways. Yeah. And I believe that a lot of a lot of things in life, if you, if you persist enough with the right approach and you're optimized, I believe you will accomplish it. And so if I say I'm going to be Paralympic champion... I'm going to be Paralympic champion. Now, I think that's this summer. And I think I actually know that that's going to be this summer, right? But say, God forbid, something happens. I got injured or whatever whatever happened. World I got, War Three, whatever. World War, Three, World, World War Three. the games get canceled. And then they go, you said, uh, I'll still accomplish it. I'll still make it happen. Yeah. Oftentimes, people look back when, when someone's vocal about this stuff, and it doesn't really matter because it's so far in the past. And it just, reality has taken over. So... And in, in, in our case, if you are someone and I have-